Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, October 10th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Singapore. Xavier today had some fun with a Word document that arrived as an XML file. I believe ever since Word 2007, the default format was actually XML and it's the open XML format that Word is using to save files as. But in this particular case, while it does use open XML data, the actual data part is base64 encoded. This leads to many anti-malware products not actually recognizing this file as a Word document, so they're not looking for some of the standard tricks that the bad guys are playing with Word, in this particular case, a malicious macro. So after all, an old trick, Base64 encoding can still be used to fool various anti-malware products. I don't really think there are a lot of business reasons to receive an XML document that's not recognized as a Word document, which actually may be one way to filter these particular files. Credit card skimmers that are built into gas station gas pumps have become a real big problem in part because it's relatively easy usually for an attacker to install these skimmers without uh, being noticed. Now a new project developed an Android app skimmer scanner that will look for these skimmers using Bluetooth. The way this particular app works is that it does look for Bluetooth devices with a specific titles HC05 which is very typical for these skimmers and I will try to connect to them with the default password 1234 and send just the letter P to that particular device. If it is a skimmer it should reply with the letter M. If this is the case, then the app will alert you. Now, the app is open source and available via GitHub, but you can also download it from the official Google Play Store. Now, of course, other devices may use the same Bluetooth module, so there is a chance of a false positive here, but they're not likely to be in the vicinity of the gas pump, and as such, probably this application should give you a pretty good rate of detecting these skimmers. And if you wondered if it's time to finally move on with TLS 1.3, well, a bad news for you, you'll probably be stuck with TLS 1.2 for a while. There are some new tests that have been performed with TLS 1.3 that showed that you do have a pretty high rate of failure negotiating TLS 1.3 connections, which are typically due to proxies that are trying to decipher and intercept TLS. Now, in part, TLS 1.3 is supposed to prevent just that. But, uh, of course, there are always authorized proxies that people install uh, on purpose. Think about web application firewalls, for example, or filters in front of clients that do inspect traffic for malicious content or policy violations. But uh, sadly, just the attempt to negotiate TLS 1.3 will make the connection fail. And the option, of course, is to downgrade to TLS 1.2, but that, of course, then would invalidate a lot of the protection that TLS 1.3 provides, in particular, if both endpoints actually do support and understand TLS 1.3. The downgrade scenario is a little bit simpler. If one of the endpoints just doesn't do TLS 1.2, then of course you would downgrade, but having a middle box force you to downgrade, that's exactly what a man in the middle attack looks like, and that of course would be something that TLS 1.3 is trying to avoid. At this point, the standard is on hold and discussions are underway how to solve the problem, whether just to wait for middle boxes to catch up with TLS 1.3 or whether there are some possible adjustments that can be made to TLS 1.3 to make it actually behave better in these scenarios that currently cause failure. And Adam Langley did review U2F keys. U2F or FIDO U2F is a specification to authenticate using two factors to web applications 
applications. Now it has been an up and coming standard. Uh, currently it's supported in Google Chrome. We do support it on the Internet Storm Center website. Again, if you're using Google Chrome, but in order to actually use it, you do need a Fido U2F key. Now the market leader here is YubiKey, but since it's an open standard, uh, there are a number of different vendors that do offer these keys. Adam looked at about half a dozen of them to look for various weaknesses. Now some of them will essentially just crash if they receive an incorrect message. There are others that don't seem to really provide good randomness. YubiKey actually comes out quite well here. He didn't find any problems with their implementation. So take a look and uh, see what keys are available out there and uh, which ones may be suitable for you. My biggest problem with the standard is that, as I said, really only Google Chrome is currently supporting it. Now, while it is a very popular browser, it would be good to have others jump on board as well. There are some plugins for browsers like Firefox, but they tend to be a little bit tricky to install. Also, as far as I know, there is no real standard right now for sort of an NFC version of this particular authentication standard. So mobile devices aren't really all that well supported unless you do have a USB port for this key. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.